today, we have a discussion with childhood friend, April Ash. And we got to go back to the beginning, our childhood. And we also tap into the history of our neighborhood, Hodges Heights, and how did her childhood impact her as a woman? And we also discuss her as an owner and how does she make an impact in this community? And a lot more. Sit back and relax. And enjoy. Welcome to Rise Above, where we don't let our temporary setbacks become our permanent failures. It's me, Michael C., the source of life over the mic. I want y'all to sit back and relax, y'all. Remember back in the day when you used to have those good old times playing basketball, playing baseball, playing ghosts in a graveyard, just Good old-fashioned childhood fun. That's what we had back in the day. When the lights came on, you knew to get that butt home. But when it came down to it, we all had a great time. I had a great childhood. So instead of sitting there introducing you to what we are doing in the present and doing in the future, let's, let's go back to the past. I want to introduce you to someone. She is very near and dear and special to me. She's one of my great childhood friends. I want to introduce you to, to April Ash. Hello, hello. How are you doing there, beautiful? How are you doing? Welcome to Rise Above, girl. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. There it is. There it is. You already know, when it came down to it, we, we, we did a lot of shenanigans back in the day. We had fun back in we the did. day, didn't we? we did. Red light, we green did. light. We did, man. Remember when we used to play Ninja Turtles? Yeah. <laughs> See what I mean? See what I mean? Our, imagine, our imagination just used to run wild it back did. in the day, right? It did. We had right? so much fun. Oh, now, man. look, we're adults. <laughs> we're adulting. We're adulting. But, hey, Bills. you know what? At the end of the day, we're doing all right. <laughs> We're, we're doing, doing really we're doing good for ourselves. Right. I'm proud of us. We are. I am. Yes, I'm shout out to the both of us. Yes, clap it up for us. Clap it up for us. Yes, facts. Yes. Let's get right into it. You know what I'm saying? Let's get right into it. Let's go into the past. Yeah. All right. What are some of your fondest moments and memories uh, as a child living in Hodges Heights? Literally, it was the the camaraderie of the children. So like us just, all the neighborhood kids getting together and all of us got along. Like it was that, it was so awesome how it was kind of like a vortex, if you will. We were all connected. We were all close in our own rights. And we spent time with one another at each other's houses right. and stuff like that. Right. Even through school, like we, we kept that. Those were some of my fondest memories even like i was saying earlier playing ninja turtles yep, you yep, know like yep. playing chinese jump rope with some of my girlfriends yeah. you know at the school bus stop like you know just little things like that and the fact that my grandparents did live right up the street from that, us you know that's that just part. that just made it even better so i would, I would definitely yeah say, definitely 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 yeah. when it comes down what did you learn in your childhood that carried into your adulthood the importance of family, like the importance of community, of being able to have a neighborhood that's a safe space to raise your family and knowing that your fa that your neighbors had your back. Like I remember Mr. and Mrs. Phillips, if we did anything out there, oh, they were telling my parents, you oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? Like oh, you yeah. couldn't get away with anything. But it lets you know that there were people out there that cared about you as like an extended family, right, you know, for right. you. So those things, those things carried along with me because even now to this day, I have friendships that are extended family to me. Whenever we need each other, right. whenever, um, you know, we just need a shoulder, whatever it is, we're fun. able to, yeah, we're able to call on one another and no matter the time or place. Tell me one fact that people from Hodges Heights don't know that story that you told at the beginning 
So uh, probably people don't know that that was Hodges Heights began um, back in the 1950s with my great grandfather, Mr. Elmo Hodge. And he realized that he was a pig farmer. Let's start there, right? So he was a pig farmer. They used to live out, um, out in Edgemont. And it was him and my great grandmother and their eight kids. So they had four girls, four boys. Mm -hmm. And even though like he would feed he would feed the pigs and, and sell his meat, you know, throughout the city, it's kinda like he realized that he wanted more. He wanted more for his family and for, for his community. So he ended up purchasing land out well, it was given to him but still purchased in a way like you the documents it's a long story that's another backstory okay. but that nonetheless he ended up acquiring over a hundred and forty some acres of land out about 10 miles away from hershey and what he wanted to do with it was he wanted to give back to the black families blue collar families your doctors your engineers you know your lawyers that he knew at that time could not get a mortgage from the bank so he actually sold them the plot so that they could go and build their land and to this day my father bought a plot mm -hmm. and he has built his house mm -hmm. that he lives in to this day and there are still people like you know we talked about Mr. and Mrs. Phillips that are still there there are a plethora of um, families that are still living out there that came from that era when um, my great grandfather had the land yeah I don't know y'all <laughs> Y'all hear the history, y'all hear the past. We're going to go into the present in a little bit, right after this. You already know who it is. It's Michael C. The source of life over the mic. I'm here with April Ash. She's giving us all that insight of, of our past. Now let's just go on. Let's tap into that present to see what she's doing now. Let's go get him. April, mm -hmm. what are you doing now? <laughs> uh, whoo, okay. Um, well, Currently, I serve as the executive director of the Pennsylvania Legislative Black Caucus. Mm -hmm. um, I am there to be a bridge for government and community. So I assist with uh, legislation. I assist with um, helping connect resources to the community through government funding. Um, I also help to bring a light into voting and the importance of elections. You know, a lot of times our community doesn't understand the importance of not just voting for the presidential election, because that's all well, good and fine, but government and change really begins at the city and it local does, levels. So, you know, educating our communities on the importance of voting in the elections, you know, that that is something that is near dear to my heart, mm -hmm. along with small business. There you go. There so, you go. yeah, I do that. So what I did see, <laughs> don't look at me as a Facebook star. <laughs> But what I did see is that you were into yoga and meditation. Yes. I want to know what does it do for you spiritually and physically? Oh my goodness. So if you haven't noticed, like I do a lot. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so in that my mind is constantly racing, constantly thinking of things that I need to get done on the checklist. So yoga and meditation helps to slow those things down, slow my mental down so that I am able to clearly and concisely make the right choices that best suit me for that season of my life. Um, and it helped me really also to transform my mindset and relationship when it came to food so i got into yoga because back in like 2016 i couldn't taste smell or breathe through my nostrils 
and the doctors told me that I had sarcoidus. And if you know Bernie Mac, he passed away from sarcoidus, and that is inflammation that develops on your lungs. It's like little polyps of mucus. And Dr. Sebi, he taught us, he is a naturalistic, um, a naturalist, but he taught us that the importance of our food is that every disease begins with what we are putting inside of our bodies. Right, right. So in that, I had to change my relationship with food. I'm a snacker. I don't know about y'all, but I'm a snacker, <laughs> okay? I recognize I live in Pennsylvania and this is the snack state. Yes, it if it don't is. nobody know, I mean, it you got Hanover snack, pretzels, snack, snack. we got Hershey's, you got Middlesworth, mm. Tasty Cake, stop playing with me. Like you cannot get away from me. And literally, we just talked about you know, our, our yep. family being 10 minutes yeah, away from right, freaking Hershey right, with all right. the good snacks. So I had to learn how to change that because it was it was creating um, discord within my body. Wow. So yoga really helped with the toning. It really helped with the mental clarity. And I feel good afterward. Like my body just feels good after I get done I stretching. Does, does. A good, I do a good 10 minutes every morning. Yes. It feels so good when you, oh my God. It's a positive way to start your day. It, it really is. is. It's a positive way. And like using that to affirm yourself, you know, being able to then like set your intentions for the day, it really does transform, you know, your entire day. It allows you to, you know, kind of, be in control of what you can control, right. if you will. Ooh, you know what I'm that's saying? A that's <laughs> like, a great way of saying it. You know, with your intentions. So let me ask you, what got you into yoga and meditation? Or who got you into yoga? God. <laughs> like, if I would just be 100, like, because it was nobody, like, no one said, hey, go take a yoga class. Like, no one ever said that. Like, I literally was... Um, I was frustrated. I was I was at my my end, okay. and I was like, something has to give. And I got into my prayer closet, and my prayer closet was like, um, you need to slow your mind down. You need to because you're so busy taking care of everyone else's dreams, everyone else's needs. What do you need for you? And when I started to think about it, I'm like, there's only really two times of the day where we're really totally by ourselves. And it's way right before you go to bed and when you're in the shower. When you're in the shower, it's completely you and your That's thoughts. When true. you, right before you close your eyes and you're going to bed, even if you're laying next to someone, it is still you by you yourself. And you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so in those spaces, it was like, can you take 60 seconds? That was my challenge. That's what got me into yoga. It was, can you take 60 seconds out of your day, just one minute to stretch, one minute to a I started there because I knew that I couldn't like overly commit myself to like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do like 30 minutes, you know? Yeah, no, I was not doing that. And the thoughts came to my head and I would just get discombobulated and I'd be done. Right. So I started with 60 seconds and then gradually increased, you know, and uh, I started then looking at the yoga. It was like, OK, well, if I can meditate and I can just stretch, well, there's other things that I can do to unlock some things. And you'd be surprised, like yoga will really open up some mm -hmm. emotional spaces Ooh, for you yes. to release and yes. heal. So it gives you more your tension. It does. A lot of tension. You're like, wow, why all of a sudden my shoulders are dropping? My back is like Backs. on tech. It's, it's a lot. Yeah. So do you have a company? I do. It's called Unbottled Expressions. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I know that was going to <laughs> You were waiting for that. Like, yeah. Come, come. I wait. It's the punchline. It's the punchline. Punch go get it. Go get it. I ain't mad at it. So what's yeah, it called again? It Say it again. Unbottled expressions. All right. I like it. I like it. So mm. what's it geared towards? It is really about being your best self. So it's yoga and personal development training skills. Okay. Yes. Okay. So we do Ashtanga as well as Vinyasa yoga. Those are the two different styles of yoga that we do. Right. But then I also do the professional development training on soft skills. So your effective communications, your personality. Um, mm. Yes. You know, getting to know one another there and understanding go. how we can show up in our relationships yeah. and our work environments, how we can just pull out the strengths of other people. You know, it's so often in this world, we like to, I, I will say the social medias, they pinpoint everything that's wrong with us, mm -hmm. but 
why not be in a space where you can actually bring out the goodness of people and bring out their strengths to let some let folks shine. Everybody got a chance to Everybody shine. Everybody gotta get their shine. Everybody gotta on, get right? their shine on. You know what I'm saying? Right. How will it benefit like youth, teen, middle age? And I even say the senior citizens. Oh my goodness. It's so interesting that you say that. So I partnered with um the Boys and Girls Club of America okay. to bring personality development training skills, go. right? And you'd be surprised two hours out of the week those kids love to do yoga like they get into it and you'll see them in their little dance modes and you'll see them like really wanting to engage into that just because it helps them it helps them to release the stress and the tension kids go through a lot these days that we didn't have to go through when right. we were younger right. we didn't have the social media and cyber bullying we didn't have all of that so with all of those stresses yoga helps to kind of level them out and bringing them back down from all of the stressors that come from just being at school all day long. I get that. Oh, yeah. And you mentioned senior citizens. So I um, was fortunate enough to connect with the Lynx Incorporated group here okay. in Harrisburg. And we were able to put on a chair yoga session. So like it's for anybody, ages, anything. But I gear that specifically towards those that cannot get down on the ground. You know, right. if you just cannot do it with your knees and it doesn't matter what age you are, it's like, nah, sis, I'm going to sit up in this chair. You can still get the same benefits as if you were right down there on the mat as well. So yoga's for everybody. There it is. It definitely is. Let me, I'm going to ask you one more question with this. The pandemic. Do you really feel like it's now in need of stuff like this because of everything that's going on. Like this pandemic was two years long, but the effects are lasting years. And I'll say it's going to last decades. Yeah. So with yoga, is that one of the, we're not going to call it the solution, but one of the possibly the cures of, of this. It's definitely, I'll say a, a jumping off point. You know, it's definitely a good start to at least kind to release some of the tension, even within your own home. Like it's something that you can do, like we said, for one minute up to 30 minutes to 60 minutes a day, however your body feels. And that's really what it's about. Like yoga, you can do it at your own pace. Right. Meditation, you can do it at your own pace. It's not like it's something that you have to jump in and get that hard workout in. Right. It's nothing like that. And if your body says not today, not today right and that's okay right you know yeah. you go as far as your body will allow you to i go. know that's right as far as your body will allow you guys yeah so if my body says time for me to take a nap you already know what i'm about to do take that daddy nap but you know what we about to do we about to take a break and i'll see you right after this All right, here we go. This is it. We're back. We're back. You already know who it is. It's Michael C., the source of light over the mic. I'm here with April Ash, and I'm telling you right now, if y'all are not being enlightened right now, just go ahead and boop, hit that rewind button. Or matter of fact, hit that subscribe button. You already know what it is. It's only free 99 But let's get right into it. Tell us your future goals in one year. Five years and ten years. Ooh, good question. Um, let me just uh, put a disclaimer out there. I don't know what the future holds, but if I had to plan it out, um, I would definitely see. I, I know that there's a family coming within the first five years. There you go. There you go. That's happening there for you sure. Go. There you go. Um, and I'm very excited about that. Um, next, career-wise. I want to expand Unbottled Expressions. There you so go. like, you know, with um, doing <coughs> retreats, I want to do um, healing healing circles and sessions with people. Um, there you go. You know, I do one-on-one -on -one sessions with people, but I would like to expand that a little bit more. So I'm seeking into that, and I'd like to do a yoga conference. I'm looking into Look doing you. that. Look yeah, at you go. Look yeah. at you go. You got it so, there. 
Now you yeah. just got to put it in play, right? Yeah, that's all it is. You know, you got to you gotta write the plan, make it plain. Look at it. Look at it. Execute. There it is. There it is. And look, and the people that are meant to be in that space with you, they will They'll come. Know. They'll know. They'll come. They'll know. Yeah. Trust so me. when the team is built, then, you know, we'll it go forth and do. It will take a while. It's it hey. still building. But we doing what we do we best. Do this you way. know we doing what we, we do best. You know what's coming along. over the horizon, y'all. <laughs> anyway. That's uh, right. <laughs> Let me ask you this question. What advice would you give adult Ashley? April. Say Ashley, April to young April. How, what would you say to her? If you were, if she... If little April walked in here right now, what would adult April say to her? Jump out there. Jump out there. I'm going to switch you on you now. That little girl sitting there. Mm-hmm. Now the adult comes in. What do you say to her? Jump out there. Continue to jump. Just jump, right? Jump. Just jump. Jump with faith. Mm. You know, you got to jump with faith. I, I think a lot of times, especially whether whether you're young or you're older, a lot of times that hesitation before we jump off the cliff is what sometimes keeps us from jumping off that cliff. I hear that. So for anybody, whether you're young, older, what have you, like jump. Just jump see. with faith. Mm. Jump with faith that you're going to. I, you know, there's so many times where I can say that I have worried myself to pieces and thinking that I needed something to go right for it to work itself out in the end. And I didn't. And I realized you didn't need to worry yourself all like that. See, and here's the thing about it. And, and I'm starting and I'm reading this one book right now. And this thing about the difference with the adults and children. Is you hear children say, you hear adults saying you don't want to be a child, but that's what adults need to be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because when you are a child, and, and excuse me when I say this, but what shits did you give? Hello. Not one. You would, if I told you, go up in that tree and I want you to jump off that tree, you would do it. <laughs> but if I told you as an adult to go up on that tree and jump off that tree, you would say, okay. Experiences have told, showed me A, B, C, D, and E. And I'm, you're going to expand it even more saying, if I fall, I'm not going to be able to go to work, not going to be able to do this, not going to be able to do that, and this, that, and the third. Mm -hmm. The problem is, why don't we come back to saying, you know what, I have no fear of that. Yeah. Because if I do it right, I'm not going to, it's nothing's going to break my fall if I go and I have that conviction and I have that opportunity. Let's go get it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. It's really, ch it's childlike faith. It is like, really. think about, think about your son. If your son sees you at the bottom of the steps and he's at the top of the steps and he says, daddy, catch me. And he just goes. Oh, he does he, it all the time. Guess what? You know why? Because he knows daddy's going to catch him. Yeah, he he knows, knows without a shadow of a doubt now, if you ain't there, he may think twice right. about doing that. Doing it again. But right. if he sees you, and that's the, that, again, that goes back to the importance of that family and that extended family of having that support system of knowing that, look, we can have the craziest, most beautiful, wildest dreams. And knowing that you got the support of your people mm. behind you, man, there's nothing that you can't do. You can't lose. You can't lose. You so can't go, lose. Get it. go get it. Go get it. Go get it. Last one, and then we're gonna, or then I, then we're gonna do the pie deck, y'all. Hey. Give me one phrase, or one word that describes you as a person and as a businesswoman. Tenacious. <laughs> I agree. Tenacious. I agree. That's that's since we've been a child. Yeah. I agree. With that. Tenacious. Mm -hmm. Fair Tenacious, y'all. Tenacious. <laughs> <laughs> you already know what it is. With that being said, you learned about her past, a little more about her present, and now we tapped into her future. Well, guess what, y'all? Next, we're going to have that pod deck for her right after this. 
If you have any thoughts, questions, or concerns, hit me up at the one, the number one skybox at gmail.com. I will read and I will respond to every question, thoughts, or concern. And I may even put one or two questions on the next episode. Also remember, be good to yourself, y'all. We're back. We're back. You already know who it is. You already know who it is. It's Michael C., the source of life over the mic. Well, April, it's time to hit the pod deck, y'all. You already know what I do. I come over here. I shuffle him up. Shuffle him up. After we shuffle him up, we turn around. She picks from the deck, answers the question. And we ride out, y'all. Oh, y'all already know the drill. Oh, boy, Let's go what get is it. this? What is this? She pick it from the deck. <laughs> oh, she she gets from the deck. <laughs> and the question is... Oh, if you had someone following you around all the time, what would you have them do? Ooh, that's kind of stalker show, man. I know. That's like, if I just had somebody following me around... You know what? <laughs> <laughs> I would have them. This is exactly what I would do. I would have them go up to the bodega across the street from the YMCA okay. on 6th Street Okay. every day. Now, they got to do this all every day. Okay. okay. And they had to get me a tuna sub <laughs> with banana peppers and sweet peppers. And some Middlesworth chips for my lunch. All right, I go with the Middlesworth. You get see? the crunch. You want the you crunch? Got, I got to get the crunch, crunch along with the crunch. All right, all right. Yeah, go so I got to get, they would have to get, yup, they would have to get that for me every day. <laughs> How can they contact you? <laughs> you can reach me on um, Facebook. I'm on Unbottled Expressions or April V. Ash, A-S-H-E. Um, I am also on Instagram at Unbottled Expressions, or you can find me on LinkedIn as well, April V. Ash. Got any shout out? You know what? Shout out to my mom, my dad. Shout out to the whole Hydra's Heights crew. Like Monica, is. Richard, all of y'all, Daryl, where y'all at? You know what I'm saying? Like, shout out to all y'all. Yes, definitely. You already know what it is. You already know what it is, Nico. You already know what it is, Noel. But I want to thank y'all for tuning in. And if you like this episode, or I'd love to hear from you. All you have to do is email me at the one, the number one skybox at gmail.com with your thoughts, your questions, or who would you like to sit here and have that convo with me? I'd like to thank April Ash for giving us everything about the past, the present, and the future. And she gave us a little insight about my childhood place, Hodges Heights, and a lot more. I'm Michael C., the source of life, over the mic. Until next time, be good to yourself, y'all.